morning, good morning, good morning, good morning around the world. Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm just excited about today's call. Wow, I meant to announce it yesterday, but I sent a text out all around the country and outside the country today for our guest speaker today. Hey, I want to thank, first of all, Freddie Sherman for being on the call. Uh, Mr. Tim Kennar up in, Nash up in uh, Minnesota, thank you so much. Dale Ranson in Nashville. Mr. Isaac Grossman, good morning, sir. Joyce Brewer, also Mr. Casey Carter down in San Diego. Good testimony the other day. Miss Lisa, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Gaston up in Nashville. Miss uh, Luana Pinedo, Regional Director out of Fresno, California. Melissa Vaughn, good morning. Also like to thank uh, Miss Konohara over in Japan. Over in Japan, good morning. Ms. Linda Batiste, good morning. Ms. Caroline Baker, good morning. Part uh, Ms. Celia of Woodland, good morning. Ms. Dominic Young out of Nashville, school teacher. Mr. Mills, uh, Harrison Mills, good morning. Mr. Ismail, good morning, sir. Lisa, good morning. Mr. Lance Kelly, good morning. Mr. Payon out in Japan, another one in Japan. Ms. Castro, good morning in, 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 in Arizona, thank you. Ms. Marcia Carter, Mr. Marvin Carter, regional director out of Fresno. Mr. Michael Jenkins, Ms. Natalie, good morning. Ms. Pat Robinson in Oakland. Let's go up north to uh, Elk Grove where we got Ms. Patricia and Frank Bowman. Good morning, dear. Good morning, sir. Mr. Ricky Gil uh, Gilman, uh, Gil, excuse me. Thank you. Woo. All right. Sensational. Oh, look at her. Mr. Sergio out of Mexico. Another country. There we are. Tracy Gilmore of the Bakery Organization. Thank you. Winston Herbert, good morning. Ms. Zoe Duffy of the Bakery Organization. Chris McDowell, good morning, sir. Edmund Smith, regional director of Southern California with the fastest growing organization, Mr. Julian Lewis, good morning, sir. Christina, good morning. Sam Foster in Dallas, Texas. There she is, Miss Diane Collins out in Australia, mates, where they don't strip on the Bobby and it chase the shalers, the, the funny blokes. <laughs> out in Australia, thank you for joining in. Rose Guerrero up in Idaho today. Um, thank you so much. And Mr. Chris King, they're both regional directors up in Idaho today traveling. Miss Eileen, good seeing you in San Diego. Miss Delilah, a part of the bakery organization up in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And Miss Evelyn Fibbs, regional director out of Fresno, California. Hey, we got a great call lined up, as you guys know. I text everybody, I've been talking about it for about a week. My dear, dear friend, uh, Mr. Jordan Allen. But before we get started, you know, um, I, I called him yesterday to see if he was in Vegas to go have a cigar because we do enjoy his good cigar together. Uh, he has the home on the strip. A uh, matter of fact, uh, at, the, at the Mandarin Oriental, there's a uh, there's a picture. He's probably laughing now because I've saved all our cards. And then he has a house up here in the hills, uh, Mount Charleston, where people go ski. And then he has a place in Drone where he broadcast last time from us. He had those places for many many years. And um, uh, here's another great photograph of us together and hanging out in the helicopter. <laughs> that's his, that's the helicopter he flies. There you go. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing to have a multi other millionaire mentor uh, guys that also network marketing. And here's one of the things we, we enjoy doing, having a cigar. There we are. Two characters. There you go. Yep. 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 We get it. We have a cigar a month and this is another one uh, to my mentor, Al, Al, thank you. And uh, yeah. Yeah, we won't talk about that one because I don't want to get in no trouble. And he also authored his first book is called Beach Money. Beach Money. And he has another one called Better Than Beach Money that came out with also. We're so excited to have him on our call today. And uh, see, I don't throw anything. I keep a lot of things and cards and things that are memorable to me that means a lot, very instrumental. Without further ado, my dear friend from, uh, he's calling from Jerome, uh, Arizona, high on top of the mountain. His place overlooking the mountain there in Jerome, uh, Arizona. Without further ado, my dear friend, Mr. Jordan Allen. Good morning, sir. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> hey, Al, Al, Al. I'm actually up, I'm on the Vegas Strip right now. Oh, you're in Vegas? I'm oh. in Vegas. I got in Vegas yesterday afternoon. Hey, hold up that card that shows beach money again. I want to share something with you that you don't know and nobody else knows. So that's that cover that Al's holding up there. That's the first. There was, there's been four generations of beach money. This is the first one. And if you see that guy there on the beach, we ran out of time as far as getting the photography done for the book. And so they found this tall black guy and they lightened him up a little bit and they posed him on the beach like that. And when you look at it, look at that picture, Al. Doesn't that look like me? Yeah, it does. That's not me. That's a tall black guy that they lightened up to make oh him look God. like me. Yeah. He's been drinking 
He's been drinking some Michael, jo Michael Jackson juice then to get light like that. <laughs> I guess so. So anyway, that is the first cut. If you, if you buy that book, that's the original, but the new book that the new book that looks like this, this is the new one. This has four additional chapters. There you go. If you have this book, this is the new version. If you buy anything other than this, you're going to be getting an older copy that's not updated. So yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Good. And if you go to page, if you go to page 64, the day momentum hit, that's about Al. That chapter is about Al Thomas. So I think some of you probably know that, but I wanted to kind of call your attention to that. So Al, how you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. Welcome, welcome back to Vegas. I know yesterday I called you in Jerome uh, at your other was, location, and I was yeah, I was driving. So if, if if you're available tonight, we'll grab a cigar if you're free. Early Done. Later we'll do afternoon. it. All right. We'll do it. Matter of fact, we call and have a cigar. So yeah, we can do that this afternoon. I'm anytime after three o'clock. I'm available. I've got a one o'clock, a one thirty, a two. But anytime after three, my friend, let's do it. All right. Hey, we'll I want to. I want to I want to start off by asking a question. Uh, I, I, uh, one of the questions was you said, and a couple of people already hit me up, like ask them to, you know, one of the questions, the top questions I got when you did a talk for us recently, you talked about a book that you picked up at a garage sale, you paid a twenty five cents for that changed your life, but you yeah. never told anybody what that book was. And so I got five people say one of the questions, Mr. Thomas, can you ask them that question? Okay, so. There, there's a, so I picked up a book at a garage sale back when I was in my 20s. It was at that time, there were probably only three books written about network marketing. Today, there's hundreds, maybe even thousands of books about network marketing. But back then, there were really only three. And it was called The 10 Napkin Presentations by Don Faila. I wouldn't buy it. It's F-A, his last name is F-A-I-L-L-A, F-A-I-L-L-A. And so the guy's still alive. He's like 90 years old and he's still training people, but he rewrote the book a number of times. And the book now I believe is called the 45 second presentation. And, and what I got from it besides the, it was the first time I was introduced to residual income, this book, but the simplicity of network marketing, you know, most people make it way. And Al, you know, we grew up in a company, our last company where I met Al, we grew up with the guy that was the co-founder of the company that he talked about, you know, building the business. And he always talked about the same three things, every talk. It didn't matter if he was talking to 10 people or if he was talking to 14,000 people, he told the same speech, one hour speech, and he talked about the same three things that you do. And, and in Don's book, it's, it's similar, but it's got more con concepts about network marketing. It, real, it really helps people to understand what network marketing is and how it works. And I had never been exposed to this before, never heard of it before. My dad was, my mom and dad, my mom didn't really care, but my, my dad, he was very resistant. Um, you know, he called it a pyramid scheme all my life, 25 years um, from the time I got interested in network marketing to the time I started making big money in network marketing. He was very, very, um, he fought me a lot. And, and for years, because I didn't make my first, I didn't get my first check until my 12th year in network marketing. But for years, you know, every time the topic would come up, and most of the time he was the one that would bring it up, we would end up in a big fight. And I'd end up slamming the front door and leaving, and it was never pretty. We even got in a big fight on Thanksgiving dinner. And I, I, I left the Thanksgiving dinner table because he hated network marketing. But and then his last, the last 15 years of his life, he loved network marketing. And I, you know, he would ask me for copies of my book so he could give them to his friends. He bragged about me. I bought him new cars, took him on cruises. But that's how you gotta, if you've got people around you that don't like what you're doing for some reason, you gotta prove to them that it's real. And you gotta prove, and then you gotta be real generous with them. If you're married, yeah. when, if you're married and your spouse doesn't like network marketing, let them cash the checks. Let them you know, cash the checks. I was talking to a guy yesterday. I said, you got to be like a postage stamp. I said, think about it. You got a post stamp. You, you put it on the envelope and it sticks to where it's going. In other words, you got to stick in there to get to your destination. And uh, be a band leader, you have to turn your back to the audience to conduct the orchestra. So in other words, you have to turn your back and just go, like you said, prove them wrong. And I, I've heard story after story after leader after leader. I had the same thing. Parents were against it. Wives against it. 
hustled against it, but when the money started coming, they knew they could do it. Isn't that amazing? It really is. Those are great examples. And yeah, and so, so to, answer, to answer your question, Al, the 45-second presentation, it's the same book, but it's been rewritten as the 10 napkin presentations, which I picked up at a garage sale for a quarter that changed my life. Hey, George, tell everybody the three things that, that, that are in our, the three things he could talk an hour about every time he talked. What were, do you remember the three things? <laughs> uh, <laughs> do back, I remember them? I, oh my God, huh? are, you, are you kidding me? How could you forget them? For 13 years, we'd hear them, <laughs> you know, every, we didn't have Zoom or anything like that, but every time we went to a meeting that Steve was talking, he would talk about those three <laughs> things and you, can't, you couldn't forget. And, and, and the concept, you got to get the concept of it because things have changed a little bit. You know, we use technology today that we didn't use back then. But Steve would stutter and he spoke very slowly. And he's a Texan and he's this big Texan. He'd get up in front of the group, in the front of the room. It didn't matter how many people. First time I heard Steve speak, it was for, I think, 20 people. And then I, and then I heard him, you know, I spoke on stage with him years later with, 14,000 people. Al spoke at that same event, one of our big events. And Steve told the same one hour speech for 13 years. I heard him say, tell the speech a hundred times. And he would talk about three things. The first thing he would talk about is the process. And the process was a blue form, which was our distributor form. You got to get a blue form filled out, which is the distributor form. You got to have two red forms attached to it. Those were customer forms. And when you sent the two red forms in with the blue form with the $395 check, $100 would come back. And he would talk about that for 20 minutes, what I just told you. And he would say it over and over and over again. You get, you get a blue form, you get somebody to fill that blue form out, then you get them to go get two red forms filled out, attach it to the blue form, along with a $395 check, you mail that to the company and $100 comes back. And then he'd talk about, you know, he'd get questions from people. And some of the questions were like, you know, they make you go, they make you like shake your head because you know that the question is not going to make any difference in their success, but they need to know the answer to the question, right? I told somebody the other day, compensate, learning the compensation plan pays you zero. Learning the compensation plan pays you zero. The only thing that pays you is signing up a new distributor who gets customers or signing up customers. That's it. That's the only thing that pays you. So that's where you need to be spending your time. You'll learn the compensation plan. As you get the checks, you'll figure out why you got them. But the first thing Steve talked about was the process. This is how we make money. This is what you need to do. And he didn't get into detail. He just said blue form, two red forms, 395, you get a hundred bucks. Send it in, you get a hundred bucks. Somebody asked him a question. He'd say, I don't know about that. Remember that, Al? I don't know yeah. about that. He'd, he'd go, he'd I don't know always... about that. He'd never answer a question. Somebody asked, raised their hand, asked him a question. He goes like, I don't know about that, but I, <laughs> he, I, I do know this. I do know that if you get a blue form and attach two red forms and send it to the company with $395, you're going to get a hundred, the company's going to send you a hundred dollars back. And he'd get questions from the stage. He's he'd talking, take I'll questions. be right back. All right. He'd get questions from the stage and that's how you would answer every question. We'd listen to that for 20, 30 minutes. And then the second thing he talked about was quitting. And he'd say, you know what? I've never met a quitter that succeeded. The number one reason people don't make it is because they quit. It's not because they fail. It's because they quit. Somebody said recently, uh, why somebody asked recently, why don't, why don't, why, doesn't, why don't very many people make money in network marketing? Why do so many people fail in network marketing? Very few people fail in network marketing. Most people quit network marketing, but it's no different. Why is it that most people that spend thousands of dollars to get their real estate license never sell a single home? 90% of everyone who gets a real estate license never sells a single home. Did they all fail? No, they all quit. They didn't do it. You can't make money if you don't do it. So Steve talked about that for another 15, 20 minutes, quitting. He'd say, he'd say ne people never come up to me and say, Steve, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm just a quitter. I'm a quitter. That's what I do. I quit things. I quit everything I do. People never said that. They always wanted to blame the compensation plan or blame the company or blame Kenny or blame Al or blame... The 
the, their family or blame the market or blame the product failing or whatever. They're looking for an excuse. But this is what Steve would talk about. And, you know, I look at everything. Start a traditional business. Why do most people don't not make it in traditional business? Not because they fail. Most people don't make it in traditional business because they quit. And that's how it is in network marketing and everything else. Why is it that most people don't succeed at losing weight? Because they failed? No, they quit. They quit. quit. Quitting is about taking responsibility. It's about you. So that's the second thing he talked about. And then the third thing uh, was, uh, what was the third thing? Gosh, no. All of a sudden, while you think about the third thing, let me, let me kind of go through the first process. While you uh, think about it, I'll give you a couple of minutes to think about it. I'm going to imitate Steve Smith. I had to go down and get my, uh, my, my, uh, my little uh, deals that Steve always did. We'd be sitting in that coffee shop or, or somewhere, and he would sit there, and he'd do a presentation. Even in front of on stage, you'd have this, he, he, and he would talk real slow. And you thought he was drunk, um, um, and he would stutter. Um, everybody, <clears throat> let, me, let, me, let me show you how, how, um, <clears throat> how, simple, how simple our plan is. That and, was it. Said, simplicity. 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 He said, Number one, you, you got to get a blue form, and he'd pull out the sugar right there at the cough at the at this uh, blue form was equal. He said you pull out one blue form, uh huh, <clears throat> and you get two two pink forms filled out, a red form, be be sweet and low. He said you'd send this in with a check of three ninety five, and a check would come back. That's how simple it was. And then actually, he's I don't know, but all I know is, is, is you fill out this form and add two of these in, sweet and lows, and money would come back. He kept it so simple. And another thing on part two about quitting, he says, I never got that, the, and I use this today, Jordan, I never got the perfect letter. And the perfect letter would say, Mr. Steve Smith, I've been a quitter my whole life. I quit things in the past. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to quitting things in the future, but right now I'm gonna quit Excel tonight. And he would just keep it so simple. Back to you. And yeah, so that's, and, and so, you know, that's what I've been teaching since I, since, you know, the whole Excel thing fell apart. I was there for 13 years. Al, you were there for what, 15 years or 16 yeah. years? Yeah, 16. I was there for 13 years when that all fell apart. And I joined the, uh, my new company, which I've been with for uh, 16 years now. I've been with my new company for 16 years. Uh, I just took a very simple three-step. I just teach it over and over and over again. I, and I, I teach other things too, but for, I'm always reinforcing the simplicity of, you know, use the product every day which you guys, you know, your products are automatically used. You can't help but use your product, right? But you use it because you're, you're utilities for the most part. So you're using it anyway, but I've got to teach people to use it. You know, anything that's a nutritional product or anything like, I'm not in that, but anything that's a nutritional product, you got to teach people to use it, but it's using the product every day. And, and then what the two other things that I would teach people to do was to, uh, we were using DVDs when I first got started. Now everything's online, but I teach people to show a video every day, you know, get one person to watch a video every day and then follow up with one person every day. Now you can do more than that if you want to, if you want to go faster, but most people don't even do the, the, the basic things. So, and I talk about, you know, uh, I talk a lot about quitting. I say, you know, you can't make your decisions I talk about this a lot. Everybody on my team's heard me say this a million times. And if you read my books, you'll hear it in my books as well. Uh, you, you, can't, um, uh, you can't build a successful business in anything if you're making de your decisions based on how you're feeling. Human beings are feeling beings. We, our emotions go up and down. It's easy for us to get depressed. It's easy for us to start focusing on the wrong things. It's easy, us, easy for us to get off track. You know, it's easy for somebody else to get us down. And so if you make your decisions to work or not based on how you're feeling, you're never going to make it. Because a lot of the time, you're not going to feel like doing the business. And you can't build the business starting and stopping and starting and stopping and starting and stopping. You have to make your, you have to build your business based on what you're committed to, not on how you're feeling. So I was getting ready to speak in front of 8,000 people at the Las Vegas Convention Center on a Friday night. I had a 20 minute segment in a four day event. And uh, at that event, see I've spoken on stage with Pitbull. I've spoken on stage with um, Richard Branson. That particular event, I can't remember who the speaker was, but it was some other big speaker. But I was, 
that they had as the, the keynote speaker. But I was getting ready to speak on a Friday night and I had my suit on and I was wired up with my microphone and it's dark. If you've ever been backstage at one of those events, it's dark back there. And you usually see the lights of all the computers and there's wires everywhere and they have fluorescent tape on these black steps that go up to the stage and they were doing the smoke out on the, you know, the lights are out front and they're doing the smoke and Curtis Broom is introducing me. So I'm, I'm backstage, Eric and Marina Warre are back there. It's a GoPro event and I'm getting ready to do my thing, go up and do my 20 minutes and my phone vibrates in my suit coat. And I, the, and I'm literally one minute from stepping up on those steps and walking out on the stage and I pull my phone out and I look at it and it's my sister texting me from Chicago saying, dad's going to die tonight. That's what I got on my phone one minute before stepping out on the stage as Curtis Broom is introducing me. And I had to make a decision at that point. It was Friday night. It happened, you know, Eric and Marina saw me and I was like, I got freaked out. Like, I didn't know what to do at that moment. I could have told him, I could have said, Eric Marina, I can't do it. I can't go on the stage. You're going to have to go up and cover for me. I got to go back and get my reservations and go back to Chicago. My dad's going to die. But I thought to myself, you know what? I've been teaching people for years. Don't make your decisions based on what, how you're feeling. Make them based on what you're committed to. And I was committed to being on that stage. And I knew those 20 minutes were not going to make a difference. So I went on the stage. I didn't say anything. I almost said something to the crowd because I didn't want to break down into tears in front of everybody. But I did my talk got off the stage, gave Eric and Marina a hug, told them I had to leave, went home, booked my flights. Next morning, went to Chicago and my dad was around for two more weeks and we were able, to, and he was coherent and we were able to, you know, have conversations and I got to spend the last two weeks of his life with him in his, in his hospital bed. But that was like a, I had been teaching that and practicing it for so many years. That was just an extreme example but you're going to have things that are going to come up in your life that, that it's really easy to use those things as a reason not to build the business, even like little things daily. And you're, or sometimes it'll be a week or two weeks, but you can't build the business starting and stopping. I'll tell you one more quick story, Al. Can I tell another story before you jump in? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So I did a, I did an, I came up with this on the stage. Like, I don't even know what, the, the, Al, if you're ever in front of, if we're ever in front of a big group again, like, uh, you know, a couple thousand people, you should try this because it's really, really powerful, super powerful. And I've, I've only done this once and I came up with it while I was on the stage. So there's, there were two, about 2000 people and I split the room down the middle and I said, what I want, I want you in the front on the left to stand up and you in the front on the right to stand up. So I had one person on each side stand up. And I said, here's what I want you to do. I said, I want you to follow my instructions to a T. But if you're on the right side of the room, ignore me. So if you're on the right side of the room, ignore what I say. If you're on the left side of the room, follow my instructions. And so both of those people, those, the one person on each side. So there's a thousand people on this side and a thousand people on this side. And I told each of these two people to touch two people on the shoulder. And if they get, when they get touched on the shoulder, they have to stand up. And then those people standing up just touch two people on the shoulder and then they stand up. And then those people that stand up touch two people on the shoulder. And I said, again, if you're on the right side of the room, ignore what I say. If you're on the left side of the room, follow my instructions. If I tell you to freeze, everybody on the left side of the room, freeze. On the right side of the room, if I tell everybody to freeze, you keep going. So what I did is go. And then it, they started touching people. And about 15 seconds in, I said, stop, freeze. And everybody on the right, on the left froze. But everybody on the right kept going. I froze for one second. And then I said, go. And then they went again. And about 15 seconds later, I said, freeze. And everybody on the left freeze. Everybody on the right keeps going. I only did it four times, one second, four times, one second. The group on the left, only a third of them are standing. The group on the right, all thousand are standing. All, all of them. Four seconds. And that's the impact of starting and stopping in your business. Why is it people that have thousands and thousands? Like I got a quarter million distributors in my organization, but I don't stop. Every day, seven days a week. Do I, I take a lot of time off, a lot of time off. I take 
I take more vacations in a month than most people take in a year, but I do something every day. It might be one Zoom, it might be three Zooms, but I can do three Zooms in two hours, hour and a half. You know, I don't need to spend the whole day doing that. I can meet people, I can meet people online in seconds today. So with some messages. So um, yeah, so Al, you know, I can talk forever. Yeah, go ahead. No, but you know what, I, I said something, I, I keep repeating it over and over, because you know, sometimes the subconscious mind don't take it until three or four or five times. I've told on, on, on the last couple of weeks of conference calls, and I hope it sunk in, because of this, I may not travel again, but the blessing is this, the uh, three weeks, almost three weeks ago to the day, yeah, it is Thursday, yeah, three weeks ago to the day, I was in three countries, five states in the United States, and I was home for dinner, and the third, and then okay, I never left my home. It's like love it. with Zoom, we have we have no excuse not to build hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people on our team with the Zoom product. It, it's it just boggles my mind how people are just like, huh, huh, huh. <laughs> it, it's amazing. It's amazing. You know what, Al? Yeah. I can I, I can remember when we were in the early days of the pandemic, where we were still traveling a little bit, still meeting with people, and doing a lot on Zoom as well. It got to the point where I couldn't remember, this is how powerful Zoom is. I couldn't remember whether I met with somebody in person or over Zoom. I just know I met with them. So people don't remember. It's just as, it, it, it's just as effective. Hey, by yeah. the way, um, I don't know how much time we have together. I can't promise that I'll get to everybody, but if you have a question for me, you can pop it in the comments. I'm watching the comments. Here's the next question. What kept you going when so many people told you no? Again, it, can, it goes back, well, two things. One is my commitment, commitment to see Good the job through, right? My commitment to see the job through. Because again, it's not, somebody tells me, no, I'm not making my decisions based on how I'm feeling. I'm making my decisions based on what I'm committed to. And I make commitments, uh, I keep commitments to myself. If I say I'm gonna do something, I do it. And if you say you're gonna do something, that's why most people don't make it. They don't keep their commitments to themselves. So, uh, the second thing is my dreams. You know, one of the most tragic things that you can do is have dreams and not fulfill those dreams. You know, you've got dreams. Um, and if you don't have dreams, here, here's one way that you can practice because there's some people that have given up on their dreams for so long and there's been so much self-talk over their lives that have, you know, kept their dreams at bay. They just forgot how to dream. Pick three things, just three things, and that maybe things that you've wanted to do in your life that you've given up on, things that maybe you don't believe are possible for yourself, and just write those three that things down and put them in front of you. You know, so, so we have, eye, most of us have eyebrows. And the reason we have eyebrows is because when we sweat, the, 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 the dust and, and it won't get into our eyes. That's why God gave us eyebrows. Well, we also have a subconscious mind. And our subconscious mind doesn't think the way we do. The way we think consciously is in a linear fashion. Step one, step two, step three, step four. If you wanna go from here to there, this is the direction, you know, directions like GPS. That's the way our conscious mind works. But our subconscious mind works multidimensionally. We can't understand it because consciously, we, it's, we can't understand how our subconscious mind uh, processes because that's not how we think consciously. Th so what happens is when we dream, when we go to sleep and we're dreaming, we wake up and we got all this really crazy stuff going on in our head that we can't figure out. It's like all these, either it might be a nightmare. Or a lot of times it's all a nightmare is, is your subconscious mind trying to figure out the shit that you've got going on in your life. That's what you, that's why you're having dreams. And so when you write down your dream, when you write it on a sheet of paper, like what you want, when you're sleeping, your subconscious mind will figure out how to get you there. And in almost 100% of the cases, the route to your dream will not be the logical route that you figure it out on your own. If you think wow. about like how you, how you get your dreams today, rarely does it happen the way you planned it. So true. Like, like I wrote when I was 47 years old, I wrote in a journal that I wanted to be a space traveler. And back then when I was 47, which was 15 years ago, 
there we, they were not talking about civilian space travel back then. And the only people that went to space were people in their 20s and maybe early 30s. You had to be an engineer and a fighter pilot and all this stuff. You had to have many, many years of training. And I was 47 and had no years of training. And I knew when I wrote the goal, Space Traveler, that I, there's no way in a million years I'll ever be going to space. I knew that when I wrote the goal, Space Traveler. Well, 10 years later, uh, Richard Branson launched the civilian space program, Virgin Galactic. And I was, I didn't know about it, but I was at a hotel in Salt Lake City and I bumped into a woman. I bumped into her. Remember, your subconscious mind will figure it out. I bumped into this woman. Her name's Carolyn Ferguson. She had short red hair and she was from New Zealand in Salt Lake City. And we started talking. I met her at a Starbucks. And she, I said, what do you do? She says, I'm a travel agent. And I'm thinking, oh, travel agents, they're hurting right now because of the internet. And she goes, she just had her best year ever in 21 years. I go, really, what do you do? She goes, I book space. And I go, space? And she goes, yes, yeah, space. I'm thinking hotel room, space and cruise ships. She's going, no, space. And she points up. And I go, what do you mean? Quarter million dollars, you can buy a ticket to go to space on Richard Branson's civilian space program. And they hadn't even built the first spaceship yet. Today, there's three spaceships built. They still haven't taken any civilians up. So I didn't tell her about my goal. I didn't tell her about my dream that I'd written down when I was 47, 10 years prior. I went back to Jerome and I went into my storage and I started going through old boxes of journals to find the journal where I'd written the dream down and I found it. And then a month later, Virgin Galactic contacted me and said, do you want to meet with me? And do you want to meet with us in Vegas when we're in town? And I'm like, yeah. And on my 57th birthday, 10 years after I wrote the goal, wrote the goal down, I wired a check for 250,000 to Virgin Galactic and I'm in the civilian space program. But the result of that is the past five years, I'm scheduled to go and probably within two years. But the, the result of it was in the past five years, I've, got, I've gotten to meet a couple hundred people that are all future astronauts with Virgin Galactic. I've met space shuttle astronauts and flight engineers and rocket scientists. And I've been at the, to the space center and I spent a week on Richard Branson's island with him tw all day long, out on the boat, uh, playing chess, playing tennis, having breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The, I, I couldn't put a price. I, I literally, if you wanted an hour of Richard Branson's time, it would cost you right now about $200,000. If you wanted an hour of his time. I got to spend a week with him on his island. And, and be able to hang out with him. And I've got pictures. Uh, Al, are you looking for it? Al's yeah. looking for the picture. Yeah, so, but that was a result of a dream that I wrote down. Let your, but you've got to write it down and you've got to look at it. You got to see it all the time. Your subconscious mind will figure out how to take you there. Manny, how you doing? Hey Manny, I got to tell you something. I did a, I did a training. I'll send it to Al. I might, Al, did I send you my training where I'm wearing a mask through the whole training? No, you didn't send that to me. I, I got to send it to you. You can send it out to your team. It's kind of fun. All right. Very yeah, good. it's uh, yeah. It's hey, uh, tell about, go ahead. It's a 10 minute training, but I did the whole, it's, it's like nothing you've ever seen before, I promise. I'm looking forward to it. Hey, what's the story with that watch on your, uh, on your arm? What's the story behind that? This watch? Okay, I thought it was the other one. Okay. Which one was the other one? The I thought you had the other Rolex on. Oh, the other one. No, I'm wearing a different one. No, but that watch was given to us. You got one. You wearing it? No, I don't have it on today. No, it's a it's a solid gold, uh, solid gold yacht master. They're one of a kind because they they were made in Europe and they're actually custom. They got rubies in the dial and a pearl face, solid gold, uh, Rolex yacht master, and that was given to us for reaching the top rank in our last company. That was a nice little gift, huh, Al? Yeah, it was a nice little gift. Nice little what, surprise. What type? Network marketing is the only place that you do. You, there's no company out there that you could go work for where when you get to the top, they're going to give you a solid gold Rolex. Only in network marketing do they do that kind of stuff. There's no company out there that takes you on trips the way that uh, around the world, the way that network marketing does. The, 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 there's nothing like network marketing. It's the best. And people don't, if more people really got it, I do have one more. I do have another. 
How are we doing on time, Al? Oh, man, just take your time, bro. Just do your thing. C continue on. Ah, good question. Alexander asked the question, uh, do you reverse engineer when you do a game plan? You know what? I don't. Now, if your upline teaches you to do that, you should do it. But I don't do it. Look, what? look, all you got, hey, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a sorry, Jordan. I got to go jump for it. Here. No, do here, it, do here it, do it. Here we go with this complicated stuff again. Remember, yeah. one blue, two reds, send 199 in, money comes back. That's it. Go tell yeah, the story. No, I, I, do, I do not reverse engineer anything because it never goes the way you plan it. That's a, that's a, it never goes the way you plan it. You can plan it all day long. We can't figure it out. You just got to do the basics over, over and over and over again every day and put your dreams out there. That's it. That's all you do. And, and if you stay focused on doing the daily activity and focused on your dreams, you'll get there. All right. Ms. Jocelyn, so, Ms. Jocelyn just will say, get to work and quit complicating. It's so true. That's right. It's so simple. Jocelyn. It's that's so right, simple. Jocelyn. One of these... Yeah. Three in our business, three three services, what one hundred ninety nine dollars money come back. What? Yeah. Hey, I do anyway, want to. I do. I do want to share one more thing, but I want to show you guys something. Uh, this is really spectacular at night, but this is my view right here from my condo. I don't know if you can see that. So that's Park MGM. That's the old uh, Monte Carlo, and that's New York, New York, right there with the with the uh, roller coaster, and then you got the MGM over here across the street. And then the Mandalay Bay and uh, Excalibur. I'm looking out at the stadium. You can see the new Allegiant Stadium that, uh, that just uh, didn't open up. So anyway. Um, the first yes. game was this past week. Right. They're charging uh, the, the Raiders, $400. The Raiders beat up on the, on the St. Louis. I mean, uh, on the, the Saints. It's a good did you, game. Did you, did you see, Al, that they're charging $400 to park out there? That was ridiculous. They, I was watching it. I was watching the game on, uh, and it's it's crazy. The parking lot was full of people. It was it was dumb. Yeah, you can't go in, but you can pay four hundred dollars to sit in the parking lot in your car. <laughs> <laughs> but they won't pay, they won't get it. But hey, I won't get. But I'm not getting a pyramid deal. I'm not getting a pyramid deal. I'm, no, 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 no. I'm getting a pyramid deal. That's so fine. I'll, si that I'll sit up. I'll sit up here in the condo. Watch the game on the TV, watching you in the parking lot down there paying 400 bucks. <laughs> you know? so, so anyway, um, so uh, uh, I wanted to just share something with you. I've probably made in, this is going to sound crazy, what I'm going to tell you right now. It's going to sound crazy, but, I, but it's the truth. I have probably made $2 million in my network marketing business from, by picking up the scraps. And I'll explain to you what I mean by that. The people, and I, I had one yesterday, somebody that signed up with me that was shown the business by someone else, but that person is no longer in the business. They quit. So when I look at the number of, dis I've signed up, in my current company, I've signed up 550, 550 distributors in 16 years, which is about three a month. I'm just consistent. I'm just consistent. I show the business at least once a day on average and I sign up and I've got, I, I'm really good at getting referrals by, by appreciating people and staying in touch with people. And so I've got, you know, thousands of people that I've shown it to over the years and I stay in touch with as many of them as I can and I try and appreciate them. And uh, so I get referrals, but I average about three people a month. So I've signed up about 550 people. Uh, of those 550, probably a hundred of them I got as a result of somebody that came to me that said they're ready to sign up. So-and-so showed them the business, but that person quit. Those are the leftovers. So one of the things you can do to be successful is just keep showing the business and sticking around. You'll yeah. have people that'll come to you, right, Al? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, had, I've had one in the last, I had three people in the last 30 days. It's amazing. It's so true. Hey, so somebody, Julian, somebody asked me the question. Yeah, Julian asked the question about the breakdown. Yeah, Julian. Yeah. So I've shown the business 4,500 uh, 4, times, which is about, I, I figured it out. It's about one a day. So I figure out one a day, 4,500 times in, in 16 years. You can figure that out. You can calculate it out. It comes out to about one a day. And out of those 4,500 presentations, we'll just, I signed up 550, but we'll just say 500 which comes out to one out of nine, one out of nine. So that means I've gotten four 
thousand no's and 500 yeses. All right, and so one out of nine uh, on average sign up with me and the other eight, some of them become customers. Some of them think that it's a stupid idea. Doesn't matter whether they think it's a stupid idea because it's, we all know that it's not, you know, <laughs> we all know it's a good idea. They can think that <laughs> if they want to. Right. Hey, they still yeah. work and we don't. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Yes, yes, Jocelyn. Pe uh, people make backwards decisions. That's why most the the you never you'll never succeed following the masses. That's right. You know, look at the masses. They're a train wreck. Sorry, I mean I, I love them, but they're a train wreck. The masses. You know, they got they've been working for thirty, forty years, and they got a thousand dollars in their bank account, if that. And they got $10,000 in credit card debt or $20,000 in credit card debt. I was one of them for many years. I worked a job for 17 years. I was dabbling in different businesses, but that was the problem I was dabbling. I, I was never really committed for many years. So it was when I finally got myself around mentors like Al Thomas and I started really paying attention and doing the work. Mm -hmm. That's when things really shifted for me. I know I don't look as old as Al, but I am as old as Al. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> hey, you don't look a day over 90. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, guys, this is what a friendship's all about. All these years, we've been friends, and we've hung in, talked together. And whenever we get to talking, we, we pick up from where we left off at, whether we're on the phone or doing a Zoom call or having a cigar. But the whole idea, the respect that I have for Jordan is that we, we became friends through the years. When he first got going, he was seeking out knowledge and, and uh, you know, it's just a, a blessing to be a blessing. And now he went from a good student. Now he's a, he's a, he's a, he's, he's a Yoda, you know, and uh, you know, with respect to him, he's done a great job in bringing people along and giving people a way out from working nine to five. And he's done such a great job. You know, I, I want to thank him for being on our call. You know, I, I, I was watching Hitsville uh, the other night. Uh, it was been out about Motown. And Barry Gordon, Barry Gordon said something I had to write it down. He said this, competition breeds champions. See, a lot of times people don't want competition. That's why they're not champions. You know, go challenge yourself. To like, Mr. what did George say? He challenged himself. He made a commitment to himself. So when was the last time you made a commitment to yourself to get to the next level and, and beyond? So competition breeds champions. Become a champion. Have competition with yourself. But go to work and make it real. Comment, Jordan. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Al. There's nothing to say more than that. Al, you know, hit the head on, uh, head on the nail. Yeah. Is that what it is? Is that how you say it? You hit the head on the nail? Am I, am I saying that right? Yeah. Hit, yeah. Hit, the, hit the nail on the head. Nail yeah. on the head. Hit the nail on the head. Yeah. That's my dyslexia coming out. So I wanted to let you guys know something on this, on the, and this is important, Al, for you to know. Um, on the screen slide, the, the main slide that showed my picture and when the music was playing, it shows two books. And those are the same book. They've just got different covers. There are two books. There's Beach Money and there's Better Than Beach Money. These are the, yeah, so there, see, uh, Natasha's holding the old book and the new Better Than Beach Money book. So there's two books, Beach Money and Better Than Beach Money. And these are the new ones. And they're different. And they're both really fun so and and they'll really help you like if you're struggling in network marketing or if you're not growing as fast as you want to these two books will help you grow so i, I wanted to plug and 100 percent of the profits go to charity on those books i don't make money on the books yeah so uh oh yeah Al, well thanks for uh thanks for inviting oh, me we still have a few minutes thank, are we in thank you for coming on hold it to somebody want to say something to you what 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 mm, thank you jordan you're amazing Another Yoda. <laughs> oh, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I turned my office into like a sanctuary here. <laughs> Another Yoda. Yoda recognizes Yoda. Hey, my friend, that. thank you so much. I'll give you a call in a few minutes. We'll set up a time today to go ahead and get that cigar. I got some Cubans. We'll have a good time. All right. I'm looking forward to that. Before Bye, we let everybody. Jordan, oh, yeah. Wait, wait. Before you go, everybody, can we show Jordan Allen some love? Let's show some love. Come on, everybody. Everybody, give him some love. Show Thank some you. love. The great Jordan Allen. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I hey, appreciate my friend. it. It was fun. Nice seeing I'll all you guys. I'll give you a call in a few minutes. All, all right, right, buddy. Sounds good. Take care. Bye, all right. Bye, everybody.
Tomorrow morning is another Dynamite Call tomorrow morning. And don't forget, tonight at 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock, a 1 through 10, we're going to have Mr. Mills, Mr. Harrison Mills. Well, anyway, and uh, we got – well, I'm not going to tell you anymore. I, I gave too much away. Tonight at 6 o'clock, get guests.